um, I tried to rush to make this video as quickly as I could after your video finished so that I could maintain that that random spontaneity. Uh, but it's really hard. I had to open the program real fast, and I was already thinking about what I was going to say. And you know, I think inherently this medium is frame. You know, there I am in this little square here, and I push play and pause and stop and erase whenever I feel like it. Um, so there's a lot of uh, it takes a lot of commitment on my end, a lot of intention to maintain that level of um, um, genuineness. But you know, you're right. I don't, I don't quite know what the purpose of 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 speaking is, because um, if there is no truth, or at least the kind of truth that you can um, that you could speak and have that particular proposition, those words, be the truth itself. Uh, because we know our language is, is contingent, and each word is defined by a web of relationships between other words. And it's impossible to define the truth. And so when we speak and we try to communicate with one another, we can't be doing it on the basis of... Uh, seeking after the right answer. So, I mean, obviously, we, it, it's, it's fair to characterize some speech as positive and some speech as negative, or, or some communication as positive and some as negative. And I guess negative communication wouldn't be communication. I, I mean, I, you know, if we wanted to try to define some words, but only to define words just to give people an incentive not to behave this way. I don't think it is communication when uh, when we're trying to um, objectively define things and be right about what we believe. It's not communication. Communication is uh, allowing yourself to be open to others, um, you don't. Res you don't. Frame what you're gonna say based on a preconceived uh, desire. Like you want to manipulate people in this specific way to get this specific reaction because you benefit from that in some way. That's not communicating. That's that's a totally self-contained behavior. It has no. It has a purpose. But so maybe to really communicate, we have to make the communication an end in itself, rather than try to accomplish something more than just the act of communion itself. Maybe that's the point. The journey is the destination. But, you know, this is obviously a tricky issue to talk about. As if there's a, a right way to formulate this, articulate this out loud, and then words. How you, how you can be on the path toward enlightenment or toward uh, Satori or... Nirvana, or whatever you want to call it. You can be on the path while also knowing that you are, you're already enlightened. And how you can be both at your destination and on the way to your destination at the same time is it's a, uh, quite a contradiction. But we shouldn't... Um, let that confuse us. Because you know, I think we do have some kind of responsibility to not spread karma or not to contribute to the ignorance of uh, the world 
not to be irresponsible because everything is not just random. I mean, it's not everything is not just purposeful either. There's not one purpose for anything. But it's not like all of this is is for naught. I think all of this is happening because at, at some basic ontological level, it wants to be happening. And it is the Tao. It is Buddha. It is that that emptiness, that inability to know that can access all. We can't know ourselves. We can't know each other. We can't know the truth. We can't know anything. And that, more than anything else, is what we all have in common. And uh, communicating is sort of, uh, that's making us feel safe. Communication is the helmet, right? We're safe when we belong to a community, when we're understood, when we make sense. And we're always making sense. It's just a matter of um, if, if an other who, who is listening to you wants to characterize whatever you're saying as nonsense, it's just that they're rejecting their shadow. Um, because even if you know a human being goes into some ecstatic trance and starts speaking in tongues and you know the words aren't coherent, the emotional state that they're conveying certainly is. And we as human beings can empathize with them and put ourselves in their shoes and still understand them. Nothing is, you know, if, if we can't have a, this, this false dichotomy between sense and nonsense, why is something sense? Well, because we can compare it to nonsense, and, and it's, it's always going to be relative. There's always going to be something that makes more sense than something else, and there's never going to be the, the ultimate sense. That would be like saying there's an ultimate truth, and that's... It's not true. We already established, I think. Um, but um, randomness is not the goal of this type of interaction. I don't think the the goal is to because when you try to you can't try to be random, and yet that's what we're always doing. When I mean that's the definition of randomness we have to be sure that it's random so you know when scientists set up a statistical procedure they have to calculate in the randomness and it only works in a laboratory setting I think in real life there is nothing random everything is is causally linked everything is in relationship with everything else So everything has a history, and you know nothing just arrives out of nowhere. There's always a background to it. There's always a lead up to it. There's a karmic history, and when we, you know, spontaneity is taking the old foundations and reworking them into something new, organized in a new way. Same basic structure, new organization that somehow allows a new equilibrium to develop. And you know, that's all we do when we talk. We, we work out these new equilibriums of understanding that allow us to rise to these higher levels of, of, a, of a kind of a pragmatic understanding. It's, you know, the words that we adopt and the frameworks that we adopt are the ones that work. They allow us to resolve these, you know, intellectual psychic tensions between one another. Uh, but uh, my time has expired, so thanks for listening. And I like this style. Let's keep it up.